Kamala Harris, a P-file photo, New York, at an off-campus space at the University of California at Berkeley in the fall of 1962, a tall, thin Jamaican doctoral student addressed a small crowd, drawing parallels between his native country and the US. He told the group, a room full of black students, that he had grown up observing British colonial power in Jamaica, the way a small number of whites had cultivated a native black elite in order to mask social inequality. At 24, Donald J. Harris was already professorial. But his ideas were edgy. One member of the audience found them so compelling that she came up to him after the speech and introduced herself. She was an Indian scientist wearing a sari, the only other foreign student to show up for the talk on race in America. She was, he recalled, a standout in appearance relative to everybody else. Shamala Gopalan had been born the same year as Harris in another British colony. But her view of the colonial system was more sheltered, the view of a civil servant as daughter, she told him. His speech had raised questions for her. She wanted to hear more. This was all very interesting to me and, I dare say, a bit charming, recalled Harris, now 82 and an emeritus professor of economics at Stanford University. At a subsequent meeting, we talked again, and at the one after that. The rest is now history. Senator Kamala Harris often tells the story of her parents' romance. In her speech at the Democratic National Convention last month, she said her parents fell in love in the most American way, while marching together for justice in the civil rights movement of the 1960s. In 1959, while registering for classes, Shamala would make important friends. She would become a part of a black intellectual study group which would help build the discipline of black studies and establish the Black Panther Party. The group, later known as the Afro-American Association, was the most foundational institution in the black power movement, said historian Donna Merck. As a former colonial subject and a person of color, there was no question that Shamala belonged, other members said. In 1961, when Harris arrived on campus, he, too, fell in with the study group. It was in the company, in 1962, that he met his future wife. They were married the following year. By the time the couple's first child, Kamala, was born in 1964, political tides had begun to shift and the marriage had started to fray. Shamala, a scientist who published work on the role of hormones in breast cancer, filed for divorce in 1972.